Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be reviewing a series of Puma 2023 running shoes, their current range, their current line. So we've got the Liberate Nitro 2, got the Deviate Nitro 2, got the Deviate Nitro Elite 2, and then we've also got the Puma Forever Run Nitro, um, new for 2023, um, especially this one we're gonna look at. So I'm gonna be taking you through each of these shoes, some of the facts and figures about each shoe, some positives, some negatives, and uh, which ones have made my current rotation and which ones haven't. So just before we start guys, this video is not sponsored by Puma. These shoes were sent to me for the purpose of review. So I'm allowed to say whatever I want about the shoe. I'm not gonna be biased. If I like a shoe, that's exactly what I'm gonna tell you. And if I don't like it, it's going in the bin, mate. So guys, we're gonna start with the Forever Run Nitro. Now this shoe has been a real staple in my current rotation. In fact, I'm on my second pair. This orange pair is a little bit knackered now. So let's get into some facts and figures about the shoe. Now this shoe retails for £139.99. So kind of in that middle range uh, price-wise in terms of your everyday cushioning shoe. It comes in at a 272 grams in my UK size nine. So a little bit heavy compared to some of its competitors potentially. It's got a 10 millimeter drop. So we've got a 36 millimeter heel and a 26 millimeter forefoot. This shoe would be described and advertise as a max cushion easy long run shoe you're not going to be doing sessions in this shoe and you're definitely not going to be racing um, if you're looking for that pb in this shoe it is for those easy and long miles to take away a lot of that impact and give those give those legs a bit of a rest from the impact this shoe is advertised as a stability shoe so it's got a little bit more stability in there so if you're someone who typically finds you over pronate or you twist your ankle quite a lot this is going to be a good shoe for you in terms of its overall stability and finally guys this shoe does not have a carbon plate so this is just a just a foam based shoe essentially so guys this shoe makes use of puma's dual density midsole uh, which is injected with nitrogen and that is hence why it's called uh, nitro so most of their shoes have got a version of this foam as part of its midsole hence why they've all got the word nitro in their names so as i said this is the forever run nitro as i said i've been using this shoe for a lot of my easy runs and long runs i've clocked well over 500 miles in this shoe um, especially in the orange pair so looking at some of the positives about this shoe now i find it's a really nice padded comfortable stable shoe it's not super super soft like the invincible 2 was for example it gives you a nice solid structured responsive feel while still being quite comfortable and soft underfoot but you're not going to feel like you're running on a marshmallow it's a little bit more firm and i have to say i actually really like that on the first few runs that i tried the shoe on i was a little bit skeptical didn't really like it but as I ran more and more in this shoe, I actually kind of fell in love with it. It was a little bit of an ugly duckling to start off with, but now it's a big staple in my current rotation. Now I've ran anything in this shoe from say like eight minute mile pace um, on a warm up all the way down to kind of six minute mile pace on a steady run. And I find it actually works really well at all of those paces. I wouldn't be doing a tempo run in this shoe specifically um, because I do think it is much better for those longer miles. But when it comes down to those plods, those easy runs, those long runs, this is gonna be a real good shoe for you. One of the main downsides this shoe, I would say, is I really struggled with the lockdown and you can see that here. So I've had to do a bit of a runner's knot in this shoe, as you can see here. Um, and I found the first couple times I was overdoing it, I was tightening it too much and it was starting to ever so slightly cut off the circulation my foot but now i've got it down to a t and it's a really comfortable ride it doesn't slip it does exactly what i need it to do the only <laughs> only thing i would say it's it's a bit of a loud shoe it does sound like you slap a little bit but in terms of comfort um if your ears can put up with it it's a really really good shoe and overall i would give this a nine out of ten massive massive fan of this shoe so guys moving in to the liberate nitro 2 so now this is a bit more of a lightweight minimalistic trainer maybe something you can use in the treadmill at the gym um, something that's going to be really nice and lightweight like for example i've been doing quite a lot of my cycling in this shoe recently just because it is really comfortable so some facts and figures about this shoe it comes in at 110 pounds in the uk it's 194 grams in my uk size 9 we've got an 8 millimeter drop with 28 mil at the heel 
and then 20 mil at the forefoot. So you're really nice and close to the ground. It gives you a little bit more of that ground contact, that ground feel underneath your foot. You can really feel, it, feel the tarmac, if that makes sense. It's a really lightweight, minimal shoe, as I said, and that's how it's advertised, a bit more of a daily trainer. You might be able to get up to some tempo pace in this shoe, but I'm really not gonna be banging out any big mileage runs. You're not gonna see me doing like a 10 mile run plus in this shoe, for example. I just don't think it's got quite enough stability or support or or cushioning in the shoe. Some key features about this shoe, you've got the power tape, which is this kind of metallic stuff here, and this just adds to the supportive kind of feel of the shoe. It does feel like you're nicely wrapped. Um, and it, again, something that the, all of these shoes have got is a really nice padded heel cup, and that's one of the first things that I noticed when I put this shoe on. So moving into some of the positives specifically about the shoe, as I said, it's very, very lightweight, less than 200 grams for a UK size nine. There's not many shoes that I own that come in at that sort of low weight, but there are some kind of sacrifices that come with being such a low weight shoe is that it, it does feel like you're very close to the floor it doesn't feel like you've got tons of cushioning underneath there's a low drop so this can give your achilles a bit of variety so people that want to get a little bit closer to that barefoot sort of running this could potentially be an option for you it's a little bit more like those ultra or those vibrant five finger sort of feels in terms of a 20 mil in the forefoot you feel very close to the floor. It's very, very flexible. So if you're a person who likes a really good flex in their shoe, so you can really kind of bounce off the toes, this could be one for you. And overall, as far as like a daily trainer goes and the use that I've got out of it, it's really, really good value for money. Even something that used to be a staple for me, something like the Nike Pegasus, that's uh, more expensive than this shoe is now. So if I had to choose between the two, I would probably pick the Liberate Nitro 2 over the Pegasus purely from it's a little bit cheaper and it does exactly the same thing and it might be a little bit a little bit more comfortable some downsides to the shoe is it didn't feel super natural to run in it did feel like i was almost forcing myself to run in the shoe a little bit um i don't know if that's just because of the low drop and i'm used to much higher drop shoes but another drawback to this shoe is got pretty low versatility you're not going to be able to use it for a ton of stuff it's going to be your, your easy runs, some shorter runs. You might be able to do some strides in it, maybe a little bit of tempo work, but I wouldn't really be using this above anything kind of six or seven miles, to be honest. I don't think it's got enough to it. So overall, I've given this a seven out of 10. It's a bit similar to the, to the Asics Hyperspeed um, in that it's a good shoe, but there's just not really enough to it, if that makes sense. And I would be a little bit worried about there not being enough cushioning to support my, my body weight for those longer miles. So yeah. Very similar to a Nike free run as well. So guys, moving on to the DV8 Nitro 2. So don't get this confused with its very similar kind of cousin, if you like, the DV8 Nitro Elite 2. This is the non-elite version. So this retails for £170 in the UK, but you can find it online for as little as £108. And I think at £108 is actually a massive steal. So if you have a look around, have a shop around, see what you can find. It comes in at 260 grams for a UK 9. So pretty standard for a training, a daily trainer. And we do have, again, an 8mm drop. So we've got a 38mm uh, heel and a 30 mil uh, forefoot. So again, that eight millimeter drop. This is the first shoe um, that we're gonna be reviewing today that does have a carbon plate in it. Um, I was a little bit unsure if it did because it's not super obvious in there, but it, it definitely does have it. And you can kind of see like the aggressiveness um, of it there now that I'm kind of doing a bit of like a durometer sort of test thing. So this shoe is a, a fantastic all round training shoe. I've done easy runs in this, which feel amazing because of that carbon plate. I always find easy runs in a carbon plated shoe do feel that just a little bit easier. It's great for training. I've done some steady runs, some tempo runs in this shoe. And again, it just feels amazing at all of the paces that I've tried it at. I don't know if I'd be doing say interval reps specifically, and I definitely wouldn't be racing in this shoe, but in terms of that tempo pace, steady run, easy running, it feels really nice and um, kind of suitable for all of those really. I would do a long run in this shoe. It feels like it's got enough cushioning and with that 38 mil stack height at, at the heel, um, I think it's got enough to it in terms of supporting me for, for those longer miles. It feels like a very nimble shoe. Even though it's quite cushioned, it feels like you'd be safe going around some sharp corners. Something like the Asics 10K, for example, with lots of hairpin turns. You're gonna feel nice and stable. You're not gonna be worried about twisting your ankle in this shoe. I actually really like the fact there's a bit of stiffness to it. I don't typically get on well with shoes like the Liberate, for example, which has got very high flexibility. I do prefer a little bit more stiffness in the shoe and that's a that's a plus point for me. Another plus point is it's deceptively heavy if that makes sense. So it feels a lot lighter, it feels nimble, it feels agile and doesn't feel clunky at all. When you put it on, you look down at your feet, you feel like you're looking athletic, you're looking all kind of streamlined and that's exactly how it feels. It just feels like a really nice shoe that feels quick 
It's one of those shoes that you put on and you feel like you could run quick in this shoe, and I really like that. And just one final point, I would say this is an absolute steady run merchant shoe. Um, I know a lot of people say to avoid carbon plated shoes uh, for steady runs, but I think when it comes to my steady runs, I've absolutely loved wearing these. These are the shoes that I grab for those kind of six minute mile pace runs where you, you're not really going full guns blazing, but you appreciate that little bit of help, you know. One downside I would say to this shoe, and I actually did have to scratch my head a little bit when it came to the downsides of this shoe, it is a little bit expensive for something that's been advertised as a daily trainer, £170. It's a little bit expensive, but overall the grip's been fantastic. The durability seems to be holding up. I've clocked nearly 100 miles in this shoe. And yeah, the overall feel, the overall supportiveness, and the colorways you can get in it as well, it's pretty, pretty nice. So um, yeah, that's the DV8 Nitro 2, probably my favorite of the bunch. And if I had to give this shoe a rating, I'd give it a nine out of 10. So guys, moving in to the most super shoe of the shoes that I've got today, the DV8 Nitro Elite 2. Now I have to say this kind of snuck up on me a little bit. It's a bit of a dark horse in the super shoe running world. I know that Puma themselves have a couple models above, but it does still have a carbon plate in there and it's still super lightweight. And I know some people really love this shoe. Um, I can't remember the elite athlete who ran the marathon in. The Boston Marathon, the first American female, I've forgotten her name. Um, I think she ran the Boston Marathon this year. I might be completely wrong. But yeah, so a few elites are actually reaching for this, even though Puma have a technically like a higher tier shoe. This seems to be one that a lot of people are going for. It's a bit similar to how that Nike brought out the Vaporfly 3 and some elites are still picking the Vaporfly 2. So it gives me that sort of vibe. So this shoe retails for £190, which is actually quite cheap for what you'd class as a super shoe. Obviously £190 in today's financial market is a lot of money. But in terms of compared to a super shoe, it's a little bit cheaper than you than your standard especially when a lot of brands are getting up to that kind of 250 plus mark now it comes in at 220 grams for a uk size 9 so it's pretty lightweight i'd be preferring it to be a little bit closer to that 200 grams but is it going to make too much difference on race day who knows i'm no scientist i'm something of a scientist myself it has the smallest drop of the four shoes that we've reviewed today with a 36 millimeter heel and a 30 mil in the forefoot so that's only giving you a six millimeter drop so again you're not going to feel too much like you're up onto your toes um, because they're quite close together, the, the heel and the forefoot. And this is advertised as a racing, peak training, um, and super shoe, if you like. So, of course, it has got a full-length carbon plate, um, the power plate, as you can see there. So, guys, in my opinion, this shoe is, as I said, massively underrated. It's got a great value for money for a super shoe. And also, it feels like an overpowered racing flat, is how I would describe it. I think if you're doing something like a Road 3K, Road 5K, I think this is where it really comes into its forte. I wouldn't be wearing this personally for a 10K up. I don't think it's got enough support and enough, enough cushioning to it. But for a Road 5K, I think it, it's got absolutely plenty. It's going to give you that carbon plate feel, but also that lightweight kind of racing flat sort of feel as well. Again, very similar to the Nitro 2, it feels very nimble and quick and agile. So if you're going around lots of corners, something like the Asics 10K, something like the London Landmarks Half Marathon, those London courses with those tight turns, those hairpin 180 degree turns, it's going to give you that nice agility, that feeling that you're not going to be kind of going over on your ankle essentially. And the the Puma grip um, on the forefoot is just impeccable. When I've been training along the canal and it gets a little bit wet and slippery, this is, this shoe has been so much better than something like the Adios Pro 2, which I absolutely love. I love the Adios Pro 2, but its grip is awful in the wet. Some downsides, I would say this shoe does feel like it's lacking some durability. I've only worn this for a few sessions and it is already starting to show some signs of wear and tear here and there that I would hope to have kind of ste steered away from for the time being. And also I would say it's not quite as quick as its competitors such as the Adios Pro 2, Adios Pro 3, Asics Metaspeed Sky, Nike Vaporfly, so on and so forth. Um, I'd say it's very comparable to something like the Adidas Takumi Sen 8 or Takumi Sen 9, that kind of racing flat carbon plated shoe feel. But again, I'm personally not going to be reaching for this on half marathon or marathon race day. Um, I'd be picking something with a lot more cushioning or stability. But overall, I'd give it an 8 out of 10. It's a solid shoe. It's value for money definitely is a massive plus point for me. So if you're someone who's maybe trickling into the super shoe market, then maybe this is quite a good introductory pair for you. But yeah, the DV8 Nitro Elite 2. So guys, that has been the Puma 2023 range that I've been trying. As I said, I could only get my hands on these four pairs and Puma did send them to me for free uh, for the purpose of review, but I'm under absolutely no contractual obligation to give them a, a good review. And as, as I've said in vlogs before, I'm not gonna blow smoke up brands' asses just for the sake of it. Um, I'm here 
for you guys. I'm not here for big brands with loads and loads of money. I'm here for you guys so you can save a few pennies and get the right shoes for you essentially. These have been the Puma shoes that I've been trying recently. Um, and I personally, I think a Puma are one of those brands that are definitely on the up at the moment. So watch out for Puma in the rest of 2023 and, and 2024 as well. So without further ado guys, thank you guys for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, share with your running buddies. And yeah, love the pain. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.